Welcome to Truth Time, where you'll get a shot of the truth with no chaser. You're listening to Truth Time Radio on 1490 AM, the talk of Chattanooga, and 97.7 FM, hot country, Jackson, Ohio. And we're streaming coast to coast and around the world at truthtimeradio.com. And now your Truth Time host, Trey Searcy. It's another worldwide Truth Time transmission. We're broadcasting live from the Truth Time studio just outside Chattanooga. And we've got a full plate today. A lot to cover. We'll leave the telephone lines open for you. And for all your questions and comments, call 1-888-988-9562. If no answer, just leave your question or comment on the voicemail. And uh, we'll get to that and get your answer to you in the order that it was received. Again, that's 1-888-988-9562. We start off by uh, thanking the folks at WCJO Hot Country 97.7 in Jackson, Ohio. A new station that's picked up the program. We kick off our first program in September. 97.7 in Jackson is the uh, number one station for all your hot country favorites. And what a privilege it is to be the only Christian program on the 24-hour station. We're heard here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. This, of course, is prime time, and we're very gracious to everyone involved in making this possible. 97.7 Hot Country has around 300,000 listeners throughout Ohio. So we say a big hello to everyone there in Wellston, Portsmouth, Waverly City, uh, Middleport, Gallipolis, Point Pleasant, Athens, Wheelersburg and beyond. And uh, also, hello to everyone over at Grace Bible Church of Jackson. Hello to Ed, Pat, Don, uh, Marion, Harold, Alice, Matt, and uh, Lorinda, Donna, and everyone over at Grace Bible Church. They meet weekly at 10 a.m. Sunday school and preaching service begins at 11. At Grace Bible, you won't find religious meetings. It's informal, and it's not about religion. It's about being saved by grace through faith and faith alone without any works. The focus here at Grace Bible Church is on the cross. When you attend Grace Bible, you will not hear unstable teaching such as Jesus died to forgive your sins, and you need to ask forgiveness of your sins. That's unstable teaching. That's speaking out of both sides of your mouth. No, here at Grace Bible, you'll hear a clear gospel presentation that can actually save someone today. Faith plus work is not the salvation message for today. It was in time past, prior to Christ revealing the finished cross work to Paul, before he revealed the pure grace alone message. But it's not the salvation message for today. If you took a glass of water and you put one drop just one drop of poison in it what do you have you've got a glass of poison you could no longer truthfully call it a glass of water nor would you give it to anyone but that's what many churches do today they have a man that calls himself reverend and by the way just how hard is it to drop by the dollar store pick up a King James Bible look through it and find the word reverend find that it's only used one time. It's in Psalm 111 verse 9. And in this singular usage, it clearly says that reverend is God's name. But somehow in a man's brain, that means he should now leave the dollar store thinking that he's reverend. Wow, that's amazing. And then we have Catholics who insist on calling the Pope holy and your holiness. Psalms 111.9, you know, the verse that forbids men from calling themselves reverend, also squashes the idea of anyone calling any man holy. This stuff is pretty simple, but religion will blind you from the truth. We've been so inundated with religion that many today are suffering from a Satan-induced coma. These reverends mix grace with works for salvation with total disregard to Romans 11.6. And just as the water with a drop of poison is no longer water, their message is not the gospel that will save you. Folks, religion began to fade away in the book of Acts. Acts is a transitory book. With a careful study of the book of Acts and Paul's 13 epistles that immediately follow, a Bible student will quickly notice the transition that's taking place. 
transitioning from Jew to Gentile, law to grace, Peter to Paul, fleshly circumcision and water baptism to spiritual circumcision and spiritual baptism. Why is there a transition? Because Israel, who once served as having preeminence above everyone else, falls. They fall in the book of Acts, and they lose their righteous standing with God. How can we know this? Well, <laughs> it's not by listening to religious traditionalists, I can assure you of that. It's by reading and actually believing the Bible. It's by comparing scripture with scripture, and not preacher to preacher. Let's examine the evidence. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now let's stop right there. Who is the thee here? Who is the thee being spoken of here? Who has the glory of the Lord risen upon? Answer, Israel, not you. Let's read on. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Verse 3. And the Gentiles, ah, there we are, that's us. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now, let's compare what we just read about the Gentiles being accepted by following after the light of Israel during their rise. Compare that to Romans 11, verse 11. This on the other side of the cross. And here we have a verse given to the Apostle Paul as a part of the revelation of the mystery that was only revealed to him by the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 11, 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Okay, question. Who's the they? Israel. Let's read on. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Wait a minute. How can this be? Isaiah said that the Gentiles can be accepted during Israel's rise, but Paul comes along and says that we're saved, and I quote, through their fall. Interesting, huh? This is a study method of comparing Scripture with Scripture, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if you want to learn more about how to do this so that the Bible will begin to open up and become clear to you, go to truthtimeradio.com today. There I've got one comparison after another, each demonstrating that the Bible many times says a different thing about the same thing. Tradition teaches to mix Jewish religion with Christianity, teaching you to mix works with grace for salvation. These traditions will teach you to wear fancy robes, go to a special brick and mortar building, where everyone with reverence reveres a man called Reverend, esteeming him to be something that he's not. Everyone's hush hush. Shh, be quiet, because there must be a verse that says we're to be quiet in church isn't there? Everyone's dressed in their Sunday best because, ah, there must be a verse that says you have to wear nice clothes to church, isn't there? Religion can blind you from the truth. And I tell you what, if you're a homeless person who lives on the city streets and you're listening to me right now on your little transistor radio that runs off batteries and you don't have what the world deems to be nice clothing, you find a way to call me. It's toll-free, 1-888-988-9562. I'll put you in touch with people that don't care how you dress. I'll put you in touch with people who could care less about how much money you make. I'll put you in contact with some people who don't care about your social standing. People who are not impressed with the so-called elite. Yeah, religion steals, kills, and destroys. And these so-called reverends that you would think knew some Bible usually don't. Oh, they know several catchphrases and uh, a religious cliché or two, but not much real Bible. I know this to be a fact from my witnessing to them. And yes, they need to be witnessed to also, because there are many of them who stand behind a pulpit having never understood the gospel of the grace of God, which explains why they can't teach it to anyone else. When they invite me to their church, I say, First, tell me, do you preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? and you talk about a deer in headlights, 
It's as if I turned green and grew a pair of antennas before their very eyes. Romans 16.25, Paul wrote this, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to what? What's the next five words? The revelation of the mystery. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Notice that it does not say the preaching of Jesus Christ according to prophecy. However, prophecy is in your Bible also. Your Bible is divided between prophecy and mystery. If you're not being taught this, you should ask why not. There are things in the Bible that were known by all the holy prophets since the world began. And there are things in the Bible that were kept secret, not known since the world began. Things that were only revealed to the Apostle Paul. Hence the instruction to rightly divide the word of truth. Hey, get your Bible and check these things for yourself. Let's go to Acts chapter 3 verse 21. Here Peter preaches this. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, now listen closely, since the world began. Since the world began. However, in Romans 16.25, Paul says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was, now again listen closely, kept secret since the world began. Kept secret since the world began. Now look at those verses closely. Compare them to one another. See the differences for yourself. The last four words are the same, since the world began. But what precedes the last four words stand in stark contrast to one another. Peter, in his Jew-only Pentecostal sermon, said that the information that he preached was spoken since the world began. But Paul, in his Roman Gentile letter, said that what he preached was kept secret since the world began. How can this be? Peter is preaching information that was known and not kept secret, but spoken ever since the world began. But after God saves Paul and sends him to the Gentiles, Paul gives us information that was kept secret since the world began. Now logic tells us that both of these passages cannot be written to the same people. It's simply an impossibility. It would defy the law of non-contradiction. The law of non-contradiction says that two opposites cannot both be correct at the same time. Information that was spoken since the world began and information that was kept secret since the world began is different, not the same. Now while there are certainly similarities between what Paul says to what you can find in the rest of your Bible, what we're dealing with is the differences. What do you do with the differences? What about them? TruthTimeRadio.com is where you need to go. There you'll find multiple verse comparisons that will help you to better understand and enjoy your Bible and to better communicate the gospel with others. These reverends know nothing of the mystery and is why they have their members under an Old Testament tithe. This tithe was for a Levitical priesthood that has nothing, not one thing to do with a Christian church. Never has, never will. They stand there in their pulpit throne, coercing you into doing something to make a fair show of the flesh. Walking the aisle, kneeling at an altar, and on and on it goes. And God forbid you ask them who their apostle is. Even though the Bible declares Paul to be the apostle of the churches throughout the Gentile nations almost 20 times, these men with their religious blinder zone don't know it. People today will ask someone, what religion are you? And without a thought, they'll answer, Christian. Why? Because no one has ever taught them to rightly divide the word of truth. Religion was never not once associated with the Gentile churches. Christians. Religion was always associated with the relationship that God had with the children of Israel in time past. Now this is the biblical children of Israel. Israel in the scriptures. And not the nation Israel as we know it today. I'm talking about the relationship that God had with the nation Israel in the scriptures. Just like when you hear me speak of us being the Gentiles, I'm of course talking about Gentiles in scriptures, not still Gentiles today. If you're saved and calling yourself a Gentile today in your present standing with God, well that's testimony that you've yet to understand that God no longer makes that distinction. 
Once you're baptized by the Spirit, not by a preacher, into the body of Christ, you're no longer a Jew or a Gentile. You're listening to Truth Time Radio on 97.7 FM, Hot Country, Jackson, Ohio, and 1490 AM, The Talk of Chattanooga. You can now hear Truth Time on demand at truthtimeradio.com. We're back here with you on Truth Time Radio. Telephone lines are open. Toll free 1-888-988-9562. 1-888-988-9562. Got a question or comment? Give us a call. If no one picks up, leave a message and we'll get to it in the order that it was received. We welcome our new station, 97.7 FM, Hot Country, Jackson, Ohio. George Martin once said, People claim to hunger for truth, but seldom like the taste when it's served up. (laughs) Okay, got a question for you. Why is it that you've been taught to read the books of Matthew through John as if they were books written to Christians? Huh? Where did you come up with that? Not the Bible. So where did you get that idea? The correct answer is tradition. Paul gives stern warning against tradition in Colossians 2.8. Listen to the book. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Should we read the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Absolutely. But while reading them, we must keep them in their context. At this time, Jesus had come not but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that according to Matthew 15, 24 and Romans 15, verse 8. There are three very important principles when studying your Bible. Context, context, context. Tradition teaches that you're saved by grace through faith, but tradition won't put a period at the end of the statement. No, it's always a comma, followed by a but. This leaves folks trusting in the billy goat gospel. They trust that Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose from the grave, but they say you must ask for forgiveness of your sins to be saved. Or they believe that Christ died for their sin, but you must turn from sin to be saved. Do you hear the billy goat gospel? But some of these men teach a Santa Claus gospel. They believe that God is sitting in heaven evaluating your behavior for your salvation. He's making a list, checking it twice, and going to find out who's been naughty or nice. And one day you're going to stand before God and Peter will roll out a huge scale and the Apostle James will place all your bad deeds on one side while the Apostle John places all your good deeds on the other side. And while you're waiting there, a nervous wreck biting your fingernails, everyone will hold their breath. And if by chance your good deeds outweigh your bad, an angel will hand you a big bag of goodies and you'll receive entrance into heaven. (laughs) God put this Bible together so perfectly for us, all is needed for us to do is to put away our foolish pride, put away our ego, put away man's tradition, and recognize how God laid it out. Just compare scripture with scripture, rightly dividing the word of truth, and this book will open up and allow God to deal with you in a very intimate way. Comparing scripture with scripture, rightly dividing the word of truth, is classic Christianity. And that's what we need to get back to. This is the oldest form of Bible study. It dates back to the first century when Jesus revealed the revelation of the mystery to the Apostle Paul. We should dump all the new denominations, dump all the new stuff, and get back to classic Christianity. Yeah, the kind of teaching that dates back to the pre-denominational period, prior to all the divisions, prior to the time when denominations began taking over and putting their members under the bondage of this so-called church authority. Religious bondage basically all started with Catholicism. You can thank Emperor Constantine, who supposedly had a vision and got all religious about it. This occurred in around 325 AD. So it's Catholicism that we have to thank for the now 20 plus thousand denominations, or perhaps we should say the 20,000 plus divisions around the world. Every Protestant denomination there is today can trace their roots back to Catholicism. So now, people like myself, as a part of damage control, must attempt to penetrate centuries of historical distortion, 
and go back and find original truth. What denomination am I? Well, which denomination or division does the Apostle Paul tell any of the Gentile churches to be? When you find that passage of Scripture, please send it to me, and that's what denomination I'll be. Until then, I'll remain an individual member of the church, the body of Christ. And while you're looking for those denominational division verses to send to me, don't forget to read 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Yeah, here's where Paul wrote this. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Notice Paul said, brethren. He's writing to believers, not the world. We know there's going to be divisions in the world, but there's not supposed to be divisions in church. And you can say, oh, Trey, there'll always be divisions in church. Well, maybe so. That doesn't make it right. You know, most all vehicles now come equipped with a navigation system. And guess what? So did your Bible. The navigation system is found in 2 Timothy 2.15. There, we're instructed to study while rightly dividing the word of truth. We're never told to just study, not at all, but rather to study while rightly dividing the word of truth. So my dear pastor, I ask you to start preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16:25. Understand that we currently live in what the Bible defines as the dispensation of God's grace, Ephesians 3, 2 and Colossians 1:25. And this dispensation of God's grace was committed to Paul, 1 Corinthians 9.17. And you must understand, dear pastor, that God appointed Paul as the apostle to the Gentile churches of the nations, Acts chapter 9, verse 15, Romans 11.13, Romans 15.16, 1 Timothy 2.7, 2 Timothy 1.11, and that's just to mention a few. It's time you recognize that what Paul wrote in his letters are the commandments of the Lord Jesus himself, 1 Corinthians 14, 37. And please understand that come judgment day, everyone on this side of the cross in this dispensation of grace will be judged according to Paul's gospel, and not Peter's, James, nor John's, Romans 2, 16. The divisions today are a result of almost total disregard to the study method God gave to us in 2 Timothy 2.15. There we're admonished to rightly divide the word of truth. There's our navigation system right there. And it's one that's much more important than the one in our vehicle. That one that takes us from state to state, from point A to point B. No, this one can guide us into our eternal destination. You need a working navigation system one that works for you and takes you in the right direction. No more asking for directions, for they've already been provided for you. Now all you need to know is how to work your navigation system. Rightly dividing the word of truth will remove the confusion from the scriptures. A navigation system will allow you to see through the fog and find your way. You'll confidently be able to navigate through all the spiritual backed up traffic. No more traffic jams for you. You'll no longer be breaking the law of non-contradiction. The law of non-contradiction that says that two opposites cannot both be right at the same time. Now, let's illustrate what we're talking about. So get your Bible, first chance you get, and compare 1 John 2.20 to 2 Timothy 2.7. 1 John 2.20 is where John wrote this. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. However, in 2 Timothy 2.7, Paul wrote this, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Do you see the difference? Turn your discerner on and look at the verses. John tells the circumcision that they have an unction from the Holy One. That's how they can know all things. Paul also speaks of knowing all things, but notice how he says Gentiles will understand them. He said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. So as we can clearly see, according to the covenant that God had with Israel, they were given supernatural abilities from the Holy Ghost to know all things, with no need for studying. 
But under grace, it's obvious that we do not know all things. Therefore, we must study and become workmen, as we're told in 2 Timothy 2.15. And in 2 Timothy 3.14, we find these words. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Did you catch that? Paul speaks of some studying and some learning that must take place. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Paul. I'm given an unction from the Holy One. <laughs> I don't need to learn anything. You see the confusion that comes with not rightly dividing the word of truth? Those two scriptures side by side look as if the Bible contradicts itself. Well, while the Bible does have contradictory information, it does not contradict itself. We must look at who's speaking and who's being spoken to. We must stay in context and look at the circumstances. Under grace, the books of Paul speak of the new man, both Jew and Gentile, concerning the here and now dispensation of grace. And we do need teachers. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. 